Onion Cycles podcast is about thought-provoking, emotion-evoking, action-driven, step-by-step guidance to explore the unique, glorious and wonderful ocean of your being. Because healing is a multi-layered process of getting to know oneself. Become the self-empowered empiric researcher by discovering the unique layers of your existence. With your host, Nadine Alma, welcome to the Holistic Healing Hub. Welcome to the Onion Cycles Podcast. Welcome back, my beloved onions. I am so happy to talk to you again in this second episode. I do really hope that the first episode brought you some service, gave you some insights, maybe ignited one little spark inside of you to go along and start this journey of healing with me. If so, thank you very much for tuning in again and um, providing me with your trust in this. We're in it together because healing is a journey that is ongoing and I hope that you may give me some feedback. Maybe you want to leave a comment below or contact me and tell me if the episode was of help, if the worksheet as it is did turn out to be some form of support. If the exercises did something for you, if you already in this first week felt some changes in your life, if you have any ideas what else I can do to assist you in this journey. And with that said, I'm quite excited to get started on story two. Today we focus our attention on gratitude. And uh, gratitude is very dear to me and I was introduced to the practice of gratitude very early on in my own healing journey. I think it was about the first month uh, in therapy when my lovely uh, therapist asked me what I would think about doing a gratitude journal. So for the first half year of my gratitude practice, I, instead of writing three things per day that I'm grateful for down, I had, I lay down at night and before I would go to sleep, I held a stone that I collected on one of my hikes during my healing journey close to my heart and thought about three things that I was grateful for and then over time I felt the urge to write those three things down and then later on this became a monthly habit and so far I've kept to it. I've been seven years in the making as of now so it did work out pretty well and I thought it quite appropriate to introduce it very early on in the healing journey because I feel like gratitude is one of the hardest mindset shifts and one of the hardest practices to stay consistent and clear about. As we move forward, the clarity and curiosity change and consistency will repeatedly come forth in all the other practices that we will discuss. It is your practice, it is a very unique approach for each and every one of you. So I would just invite you to take away from this episode whatever resonates with you. The two things that I would sort of want to dive into when it comes to gratitude is both the mindset shift and then also the difference between being and feeling grateful. The mindset shift to me um, means that we move from a lack to an abundance, which for me translates to 
choosing love over fear. You see, we are raised in a system that teaches us that belonging to a group means we need to contribute to society in the form of a path that we need to follow, that is laid before us. And we need to contribute to the economy by buying the brands that everyone talks about. And we only feel a sense of belonging if we invest into material goods or go to a certain resort or meet at a certain place with a bunch of people. And deep down we mask ourselves and we might hide ourselves. So all in all what I figure is that to fit in, to survive, we basically need to shut down our unique light. And this stems from the core belief that we need belonging in a group for survival. We as mammals, when we are born, we basically are fully dependent on a group. Our social group makes it so that we survive. And this very intense drive for survival closely monitors where our attention goes. So once we learn something, and even if it is painful, when we overcome it, we learn that this is the known, this is the path to go now. So we repeat and repeat over and over again what we experienced in the past. This might happen unconsciously or consciously, but for now, we'll just focus on the brain as sort of like a smothering mother that rather clips the wings of her offspring than encourage it to fly. And this with the whole purpose of keeping it safe. Because the pain experienced is the pain survived and thus safe to rinse and repeat over and over again. We will dive into this very, very interesting concept um, from a psychological aspect later in our journey. For now, it's just very important to realize how our brain works and also realize how hard it is to actually achieve a mindset shift. These days, people throw this word around as though it means nothing. Oh, you have to shift mindset shift here and there. And actually, it is a profound thing and it is very, very hard to achieve. It is not a shortcut thing. It is not a thing to be learned in an online course over the course of four weeks and then you're done. A mindset shift will probably accompany you the whole life. And I'm going to be very honest and real about this because for me personally, whenever someone advertises a quick fix, it most certainly isn't the case and it isn't the truth. The truth is that it is a very mindful journey to what we want to become. The shift from lack to abundance and choosing love over fear ultimately comes for, through experience. And the experience that I want to encourage you to practice moving forward is gratitude. Because gratitude is the pillar of a healthy mindset shift away from what has been taught to us and toward to what we strive to become. Now there is another point that I want to discuss in today's episode and that is the difference between being grateful and feeling grateful. When we start our practice of gratitude it evolves into a feeling. It is similar to my point of the holy trinity of thinking, feeling and acting. So the first step would be to think, oh I am grateful, I am grateful for the 
air in my lungs. I am grateful for that delicious piece of cake. I am grateful for the walk with my dog today. I am grateful for the sun on my skin. I'm grateful for the people in my life. I am grateful for the new apartment, the new job, even being grateful for the new car. Whatever comes to mind, it is a thought. And this is where the magic happens because this is where the mindset starts to shift and your reality starts to shift because you realize that even on a supposedly bad day, there is so much to be grateful for. There is actually an abundance of things that we could be and are then grateful for. And then over time, even more magic happens because over time, whenever we are grateful in our thoughts, that suddenly transpires, transforms into a feeling similar to a, I don't know, a hot water bottle in your chest near the heart when the warmth spreads all over your body, like a heating blanket that gives you warmth in the winter or the warmth of a fire coming from a stove in front of you, that can get even bigger. Because over time, this thought and feeling wants to expand. There is like this craving that you want to make other people feel that too. And that is where the action comes in. The action being that you keep on practicing and the action being that you actually may do some sort of service for others kindness for someone else because gratitude creates ripples making the practice your own meaning that it doesn't necessarily have to be a journal whatever floats your boat this is called mental contrasting, like celebrating the excitement for the new habit while also being realistic about how the difficulties could play out and making a plan. Recognize, realize, and then plan. And once you do that, you also make sure that over time you keep the intrinsic motivation alive because when you make it your own, you self-empower the intrinsic motivation to come through because you give yourself the freedom to make the practice your practice. It is a point that we talked about last week with consistency. It is very important to stay curious about the changes within you and stay curious about what they do to you and if they are positive or if they don't contribute to growth. And if they don't contribute to change them around, um, be clear about, okay, I could try another way. I could not write three things per day in a gratitude journal. I could just grab post-its every time something happens that I'm grateful for and keep them in a jar with a beloved person in my past I had this new year's tradition of sitting down and handing them my photographs which I was thankful for and then they would take one of the photographs and show it to me and I would tell them what the photograph meant to me and why I was grateful for what was on there or what what the situation was um, concerning that photograph and then the other way around I would um, show them a photo and they would tell me what they were grateful for and that was a very very beautiful wonderful practice to close up the year while having the focus on being grateful there are so many special ways out there and I'm sure if you type into google gratitude practice and how to or even youtube you'll find a ton of wonderful suggestions from other people. And as we're closing this year as well, it might even be that this episode sparks within you the joyful decision 
to make a resolution to try out gratitude practice for yourself. It doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be a 21 days thing because science says it takes 21 days to really alter your state of mind. It can also be a, "Mm, I'm going to try that for a month. I'm going to try that for as long as it brings me joy. I will keep a close eye on how it transforms my reality. And as always, I will put the worksheet that contains the notes and the exercise for this episode on my website, www.wonderfinder.org. And you can download it for free and you can absolutely share your experiences. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear if this episode was of service to you, was some sort of support for you and if I can do anything else that may serve you better. And with that said, I am so, so grateful for all of you out there. I'm so very grateful that the second episode airs. I am so very grateful for the joy it brings me to talk to you. And I want you to know that I do feel you, I see you, I understand you, and I do wholeheartedly love you. So with my heart wide open, sending you all the love in the world. Until next time, my beloved onions.